Okay, so here we're going to look at a tier four final after treatment system. This will be on a modern diesel engine. And we're just going to draw a very simple block diagram here. So on this diagram, we're going to start off with the engine. We're going to take a look at what happens with the exhaust when it leaves the engine. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to send that exhaust through a cooler. That's our EGR cooler. And then we're going to send it through a valve. That's going to be our EGR valve. And then we're going to add it back to the intake air. As far as sensors go, we need to know what our EGR flow is so we know what to do with our valve. Some engines will measure EGR temperature. Some of them will infer that uh, from the first um, uh, EGT sensor in the system. The exhaust goes out of the engine through a diesel oxidation catalyst. Your diesel oxidation catalyst is a catalytic converter. It's gonna have a pass through uh, structure inside of it that's got a precious metal wash coat, usually platinum. The purpose of that is to take hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide and turn them into carbon dioxide and water and heat. That's what it does. From our DOC, we go into our DPF, that's our diesel particulate filter. Your diesel particulate filter is there to filter the um, particulate matter out of the exhaust. Uh, this is typically a ceramic um, wall flow structure. So it's a porous ceramic structure and all of the exhaust has to flow through that to get out to the other side. The exhaust that comes out of the DPF is going to go to the SCR. That's a selective catalytic reduction. That's another catalytic converter. That one is there for reducing NOx. Ammonia oxidation catalyst, sometimes called a cleanup catalyst. That's the next thing in line before we actually start sending exhaust out into the atmosphere. With a system like this, uh, we've got several of these large components, but we've also got a lot of sensors. And we also have a couple of dosing valves. Our first dosing valve sends fuel into the exhaust stream between the engine and the DOC. Now this is necessary unless we've got a high pressure common rail on the engine and we can do a dosing injection or in cylinder dosing where we spray fuel from the uh, high pressure common rail injectors into the exhaust stroke. It does the same thing as say a seventh injector. We also have DEF dosing before the SCR. Uh, here we inject DEF into the exhaust stream. That's gonna go through a decomposition reactor. Uh, it's a big fancy name for what's essentially just a mixer in the exhaust to get some turbulence going so that we can break down the DEF into its uh, constituent components that we need. DEF is a mixture of urea and water. When you introduce that into the hot exhaust, it breaks down into water vapor, carbon dioxide, and ammonia. Ammonia is the thing we want out of there because ammonia is what reacts inside the SCR catalyst with NOx and turns NOx into atmospheric nitrogen and water. So ammonia is NH3, NOx is nitrogen and oxygen. The SCR catalyst takes the ammonia and it bonds the nitrogen from the ammonia and the NOx together. And it bonds the hydrogen and the oxygen from the NOx and the ammonia together to create your atmospheric nitrogen and your water. Hey, uh, isn't there something uh, with that DEF dosing uh, uh, having to do with like the angle of that DEF dosing unit? 
depending on the application, um, you may have to make sure the orientation of the deft dosing nozzle is correct so that it hits the exhaust stream at the right angle. Otherwise, you may end up with liquid def impinging on the sidewall of the exhaust pipe. What's going to happen then is you might end up with the water evaporating out of it, but it doesn't actually break down. Okay. And if you evaporate the water out of def, what you're left with is the urea salts, and that's how you end up with those big snowballs in your exhaust. So that's what you're trying to avoid by orienting that nozzle correctly. Okay. We have <clears throat> several exhaust gas temp sensors. So EGT one, two, and three. There may be more in the system, but there's always at least these three. All right, uh, pre-DOC pre-DPF and post-DPF. That lets us monitor the temperature in various different places here. It's important that we monitor those temperatures because when we're trying to do a regen, we need to know what the temperatures are to tell if a regen is actually happening. When do we do a regen? Well, we have a pressure sensor, okay? And that differential pressure sensor across the DPF is going to indicate when there's too much restriction for exhaust to flow through it. Once we get to a certain restriction level, then the uh, ECM is going to initiate an active regen. Active regen being where we dose fuel into the exhaust. That raw fuel hits the DOC. The DOC oxidizes that fuel and generates a lot of heat. And that heat is used to burn the soot out of the DPF. The SCR catalyst needs a couple of sensors. And those are NOx sensors. There's a reason why we have one before and one after. The one before is for DEF trim. That's how we figure out how much DEF we need to dose. Higher levels of NOx, we need more DEF. The reason we have a NOx sensor after the SCR catalyst is to see if the catalyst is working, catalyst efficiency. Any ammonia slip, and that is simply ammonia sourced from the DEF in the decomposition reactor that made it through the SCR that didn't get used in the chemical reaction would get vented to atmosphere unless we burn it off in the AOC, the ammonia oxidation catalyst. Not all but some are gonna have an NH3 sensor, an ammonia sensor on the outlet of the AOC, just to make sure that the AOC is working properly. And that again is a catalyst efficiency sensor. So this diagram here has outlined Aside from, you know, the actual, uh, you know, def pump and control unit um, and all of the associated hardware with the tank, this has done a really good job of t letting us look at what's all involved with a tier four final after treatment system. There's one other thing that I do want to go over uh, before we wrap this part up, and that is what happens during a regen. Come on now. So during a regen, an active regen, we want to dose fuel so that we can raise the exhaust gas temps. Now we're going to make ourselves uh, a little truth table here that tells us what has to happen for a regen to actually work. And for the regen to work, EGT1, EGT2, and EGT3. We're going to take a look at what the temperature should be and what the dosing command is going to be. Okay. So 
So something that you may know from uh, doing forest regens through your service software is that you have to have a certain minimum temperature in the exhaust. Because if the exhaust is too cold, that means that oxidation catalyst is too cold. If your DOC is too cold, dumping raw fuel into it isn't going to do anything. So you have to have a certain minimum threshold temperature before an active regen will even happen. So when your active regen is happening, um, your minimum um, exhaust gas temp coming out of the engine is usually somewhere around 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is just shy of 600 degrees Celsius. Do those numbers sound about right for you guys in your experience? I think so. So let's assume that we've got a system that's already up to temperature and that uh, system is running you know, let's say 800 at EGT1, that's pre-DOC. Now my dose command is going to be active. All right. And it's gonna stay active. If I'm dumping fuel, that means as it goes to the DOC, there should be a sharp spike in temperature maybe upwards of 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, as that uh, high temperature exits the DOC, it goes into the DPF and we use up some of that heat energy to oxidize the carbon that's stuck in the DPF. So we're gonna see a reduction in temperature. But what if this happens? There's something wrong because, you know, ideally we should have temperatures rising after we inject fuel. But if I'm trying to do an active regen and I do have sufficient pre DOC temperatures and I do have an active dosing command, I should see an increase in post DOC temperature. But in this case, I don't. The reason for that is one of two things either our fuel dosing uh, valve isn't spraying fuel into the exhaust because it's plugged up or something is, is wrong with it, or the DOC catalyst itself is not working because it's been poisoned with something, or there's a whole bunch of oil or something on there because you got a lot of uh, oil combustion inside the engine. Something is preventing the DOC. Maybe it's face plugged. Maybe that thing is completely plugged up with uh, carbon and soot but for whatever reason, the DOC is not working. Because the DOC is not working, we have another decrease in temperature after the particulate filter. We're trying to dose, we're trying to boost the temperature, it's not happening. When it comes to this type of a problem, That's one possibility. Unless you've got in-cylinder dosing. So if you've got in-cylinder dosing because you have high pressure common rail, that means that dosing is not really a possibility. If you're dosing into the exhaust stroke to do an active regen, the engine wouldn't be running, would it? if you had a problem with the injection system that was preventing it from doing that uh, post injection. So that means you're pretty much left with a bad DOC. Okay. So when we're doing regens, this is something that uh, I need to make sure that you understand. And the other thing that you need to understand as well is what happens with the DEF dosing system. Uh, in your DEF dosing system, again, the system itself is going to run several tests. Those tests are going to include uh, pressure tests where we run the pump to see if we can build the correct pressure. They're going to include system integrity tests. A system integrity test is where we pressurize the system and then stop the pump and look to see if it holds the pressure. If it doesn't, we may have a leaking nozzle. Uh, we'll do a system integrity test as well uh, on the vacuum cycle. 
So when you purge the system, when you shut the machine off, we pull all the DEF back out of the system and then we close the DEF dosing nozzle, pull a bit of a vacuum with the pump and see if it holds vacuum. So system integrity tests, system pressure tests. And then one final thing that we can do as well is DEF quality test. That's another thing that we're gonna monitor. So your DEF quality sensor is gonna be in your tank. It's there to make sure that we have uh, DEF that, uh, that's at the proper concentration where we have, uh, I believe it's 32 and a half percent. So 30, yeah, I think it's 32 and a half percent of uh, urea and the remainder water, okay? The other things that we'll be looking at is temperature. If our temperature is too low in the tank, our DEF is gonna be frozen. There's no sense running the pump because we're not gonna be able to pull any DEF out. So there's a number of things that we can monitor for that as well. All right, so there we have it. Uh, brief look at the tier four final after treatment system that does include all of the possible components that could be on there. Quick review of what happens during an active regen and a bit of a discussion on what happens with the self-testing monitors on the uh, SCR system.